Hey, what's going on everyone? We're here with Alana Parekh from uh, Chicago. And I met Alana at a fruit festival a couple years ago, I think it was, right? It's been a couple years yeah. since we've known each other. Not, no, just one. We met each other at the last Woodstock fruit festival. It was just this past summer? Just that past summer, No yeah. way. It feels like yeah. I've known you for at least a couple years. Oh, that's nice. Really? I only <laughs> met you this year? Yeah, that was that was my first fruit festival. Was the one that we just went to at Woodstock. Wow, how is that possible? I really feel like I've known you for a while. That's cool. I feel like I've known you too. <laughs> what? May, may, did I know you online beforehand or something? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I was. I've been watching your videos for a while though, so I feel like I know you. Have somehow. you like? <laughs> did you ever message me or comment or maybe or like how the heck? Uh, Maybe, like, yeah, maybe here and there, but nothing, nothing that, like, really, I remember wow. that well. <laughs> it's really crazy how, um, like, like, it's like when you meet people at fruit festivals, you feel like, boom, you're like, you've been lifelong friends. Yeah, I know what you mean. Wow, it's really rad. So, well, Woodstock last summer was your very first fruit fest, and um, mm -hmm. now, this summer, you have plans on going back to Woodstock? I've been thinking about it. I hope so. We'll see if it happens or not. It kind of just depends on... How much money I'm able to save, you right. know, between now and then. That's that's a big uh, it's a big one for a lot of people. It's just like the the cost of fruit festivals. But uh, for you last year, you know, you you made it happen. Um, what yeah, what yeah, was like the driving force, the driving reason for you wanting to go to Woodstock last year? Well, I had been seeing a lot of videos about it for a long time, and I had always kind of said to myself, I know one day I'm gonna get there. I know one day I'll go. And um, I have this amazing friend, Andy, who I think is also presenting at Canada Fruit Fest. She's oh, the runner. Yeah, she's amazing. She's, she is amazing. And so she had actually reached out to me and was like, hey, like, Alana, I'm going to Woodstock this year. Like, would you want to come? Like, we can go together. Because at that time, she was also living in Chicago. And when she sent me that message, I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's just do it. Let's cool. go. And I had saved up some money anyways. So I had it already. But... And then you, you show up to Woodstock, and then you, uh, were you on the schedule, or did you just, like, start teaching? No, I wasn't on the schedule, but I really wanted to be, and I saw uh, Mike Arnstein, like, eating durian at the durian party, and I just, like, talked to him and asked him if I could be on, and we, we, we just talked a little bit. He asked me what I wanted to talk about, and he thought it was interesting, so he put me on, which was really cool. Oh, so you actually got on the official schedule, after all. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, and 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 you, you were teaching uh, you were teaching some movement classes, is that right, or or what were you teaching? Yeah, I I gave one talk about uh, my experience with the stopping porn and masturbation, and then I gave another workshop um, that was movement related. So yeah. Right. Yeah. That that was a big one. Uh, the 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 no porn and masturbation one. Um, <laughs> like, that that's a big one for a lot of people because like everyone pretty much not everyone but every guy out there pretty much masturbates like almost every day and then right. most guys don't see anything wrong with like watching watching porn but also most guys don't even really consider girls have to go through similar things you know yeah i think that a lot of people don't realize that women go through it too because i i think there's just not a lot of women who feel comfortable to talk about it but I noticed that since I started making videos about it, I've had like tons of women reach out to me who have those kinds of struggles. So I think it's more common than people realize with women too. Yeah. Wow. So uh, w with you in, in going through what you've gone through, what's like the one message that you would want to give to all women out there who are perhaps struggling with a porn or masturbation addiction, if you will? Do, do you call it an addiction? It's, I mean, I don't really ever like to use the word addiction because I feel like that kind of inherently like creates this, this like mm. like identity in your mind and then it makes it harder to get over it. Cool. So I just say like I've had issues, you know, in that area, but I was definitely watching porn like every single day, sometimes for hours. It was really bad. But like um, my message to women is pretty much the same as my message to men. Like I think that like in general, all people could benefit from no porn and masturbation because it really allows you to experience the fullness of life that you don't get to experience when you're giving your energy away to things like porn and masturbation. So, 
Yeah. So when you say you're watching porn for like hours, like how do you watch it for more than like, you know, five, 10, 20 minutes? Like what, what are you doing? Are you like studying it or? No, not, I don't know if I could use the word studying. <laughs> it's more just like, I don't know. It's kind of just like you, you get really sucked into what you're looking at. And then after a while you kind of feel like, I don't know, I guess in that sense it does kind of the, it does kind of follow a path of an addiction almost where it's like you you just kind of get lost in it and you aren't even aware of how much time is passing you by until you look at the clock and you realize like holy crap, I just wasted like 3 hours just like what? watching What? That don't is Don't judge me Ted. <laughs> no, that is as fascinating. Like I've never I've never even considered watching it for more than like however long it takes you to get the job done sometimes it could take that long wow. if you're really desensitized wow i i do you remember uh the first time that you ever even like came across this idea of stopping porn or stopping masturbation yeah, it was actually your videos. I had seen what? you make videos about yeah, yeah. I had seen you make videos about no fat, but at the time when I found it, I kind of just thought that it was a guy thing because I saw you make videos on it, and when I had typed it into YouTube, it was only like guys' videos who would come up, so I didn't really like think too much about it. But then I came across um, a female YouTuber um, who goes by the name Kasumi Chris. Oh and yeah. She was yeah, and so she was making like female no fat videos. So then that's really what what kind of put the idea in my head. And I was hearing her talk about all these benefits that she experienced while doing it. And so I figured, okay, like I'm gonna try it. And I was really, really surprised at how hard it was to stop. Like even though, even though like I was watching it for yeah sometimes hours. But sometimes it would just be like for maybe 15, 20 minutes, like, but I was still watching on a daily basis and I didn't, I didn't realize that it was a problem because I thought that that was just me like being, being in touch with my sexuality or something. Yeah. And, um, but it wasn't until I tried to stop doing it that I realized like, whoa, like this thing <laughs> has really had so much power over me, you know? That's, that's the only way to, to, to really test if something is an issue for you, you know, like, like, yeah. like, like, or something test if you have an attachment to something like, for example, um, like our phones. Okay. We use our phones all the time. And right. if we try to not use them, we kind of like freak out. Like our stress goes up, we can't function. We're like, what am I supposed to do? I'm bored. Like I can't do anything without my phone. And you only you only realize that when you try to stop using your phone. Exactly. Um, and then you think, okay, well, I'll use my phone, but just no internet. And then you realize, like, holy shit. What's the point of using a phone? Yeah, <laughs> you're like, maybe it's not my phone after all. Maybe it's the internet. Right. And then you realize, okay, I'll allow myself to use the internet, but no social media. And then you're like, well, I'm freaking out. I need social media. So like maybe it's not the internet, maybe it's social media. So like you need to go down this 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 rabbit hole almost to like discover like what is it that you're actually attached to? Is it the phone? Is it the internet? Social media? Whatever. Um, and and same with like certain foods, right? Some people are are uh, again you don't like to use the word addicted, but some people are very attached to certain foods, but they yeah, only right. are able to realize that if they try to stop it. Exactly. And and it's not like. Uh, you know, even, even if you are attached to something, it's not like you need to stop it altogether forever, but it's nice to go from time to time without using it at all. Um, I so. completely agree with that. You know, actually, I don't think that masturbation is inherently a bad thing. I think that actually it is possible to use it in a way that can, like, I actually just made a video about this where I was, I kind of like had a, a personally <laughs> virtual I think a lot of people disagree with me maybe the true purpose of masturbation is to kind of connect you with higher dimensions and higher realms of awareness and orgasm is kind of like the connection point to that realm of information and there is like a universal will that is at play all the time and sometimes it is the universal will for you to masturbate if the universe wants to give you a message in that moment but those moments would be really, really rare. It wouldn't be like a daily thing or a weekly right. thing. Like, like if you're super in tune, I think that you would understand that the right time to masturbate would be so rare. 
It would be to receive certain information that maybe you need at that time. And then you're supposed to apply the information before you go back for more. For, for right. more you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. But I think the only way that people can get there, I think the only way people can get to the point where they can use masturbation in that way is going through a fasting period where they're not watching, we're first of all completely eliminating porn altogether and just not going back to it, but also taking a fasting period from masturbation too because it takes time for your brain to stop associating that horny feeling with pornographic imagery. Right. And, and horniness doesn't have to be attached to that imagery. It can be attached to something else, except in order for you to have a different association with that energy, you need to kind of take a break from mm -hmm. it so you can allow your mind to kind of recalibrate itself. Right, that's really, really cool. I never even considered that before. It's really awesome. You have to, the fact that like a lot of people, they associate that feeling of horniness, or they have the neural connection with horniness to like aggressive porn or something, or a horniness to right. like, you know, um, BDSM or something, or horniness to, you know, um, domination, whatever. You know, exactly, versus exactly. versus horniness with love or horniness with abundance and horniness with spiritual connection. You know, like yeah, just it's an urge to create. Yeah, you know? exactly that yeah. too. Yeah, and then once you start associating horniness with the urge to create, then maybe you can start transmuting that horniness to rather than like acting sexually, you can just start creating content or something. You know, or going out for fitness or whatever. And even then, so like even then those things become a sexual experience. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I really learned is that is that life is the sexual experience. It's not masturbating. It's like when you when you aren't masturbating, you realize that every part of life is sexual and you can be literally you can make love to your life. Like you can see life as the <laughs> yeah. entity that you're Yo, making love to. I you love know that. What I mean? It's like it's like when I'm going for a run now, like sometimes like there are times where I've made YouTube videos. So right now I'm, I'm, I'm like kind of doing this, this second round of an, of a nofap challenge on my YouTube channel. And right now I'm on like day 86. And, um, throughout this period, there have been times where I have really, really struggled and I felt so horny and I just really want to masturbate. But so instead I would like make a video and I notice myself, I feel like I'm making love to my words and to Whoa. like, the. I'm like making love to the thing that I'm creating. And, and then that thing ends up becoming more powerful because it has that sexual sexual energy backing it, Yeah. you know? And so it's like when that sexual horny energy is backing the things that you're creating, those things hold more power because sexual energy is like a magnet. It can literally like, mm. it's attractive, you know? Do you know what I'm saying? Of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's really awesome. I think everyone knows what you're saying. I think <laughs> that's dope. Yeah, so, so you're going to be speaking at the Canada Fruit Fest about this stuff. And uh, have you ever been to Canada before? Uh, when I was really little, like okay. Niagara Falls, like that okay. kind of stuff. Okay. You know? So this will be your first time experiencing Canada as an adult or yeah, as yeah. A, uh, a young adult. Uh, yeah. So you are, you're 28 right now, right? 28, yeah. 28. And uh, you've been living in Chicago for the past, like, ever? Well, yeah, I, I grew up outside Chicago, and I've been living in Chicago since, like, 2013. Okay, so if people in the Chicago area are watching this right now and they want to meet up with you, are you down to, like, hang out and talk about this sort of stuff with them in, per in person? Oh, yeah, of course, absolutely. Awesome. Um, yeah, you know, I was actually playing around with the idea of giving kind of talks and stuff at some local libraries around here because we got a bunch of libraries in Chicago. You can rent rooms there for free. So I've, I've wow. been playing around with that idea of just like leading kind of workshops and groups around the Chicago area. So if people want to keep in touch with me about that, they're cool. more than welcome to. And yeah. if people want to uh, see you at the Canada Fruit Fest, what code can they use to, to get a discount on their ticket? Ahana 25. So it's A A H A N A 25. Awesome. $25. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, what, what, what's one thing that you are most looking forward to experiencing at the Canada Fruit Fest as a presenter or as an attendee? The people, the people, like that's always number one is just I really want to connect with like-minded people and I want to be in an environment where I feel like I'm being understood and not just kind of like seen as crazy, which is how a lot of people see me here sometimes, you know? <laughs>
And if, if someone right now is thinking like, oh, like uh, I want to go to the Fruit Fest, but it's too expensive or it's too far away, or I'm not sure if anyone's going to know who I am, I might feel like an outsider. What would you offer them as some advice? Well, I definitely felt a little, a little intimidated going to Woodstock Fruit Festival at first because I, I don't know, I had seen videos and even though the videos were clearly showing very down to earth, very like warm people, there was still something in me that felt kind of like nervous about it. But once I got there, everything was amazing and the people were so kind. And I think that, I think that if you have the desire to go and experience it and you don't, you're really blocking yourself off from a lot of blessings that could enter your life and transform you in a way that could completely change the path of your future, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you having gone to Woodstock, you're now going to be coming to present at Canada Fruit Fest. Absolutely. I know. It's so, crazy, right? <laughs> like, had you not gone to your first Fruit Fest, you wouldn't be... I would have never met you. Yeah. You, I mean, yeah, I maybe would have found you online, but then you may have, like, DM me saying, hey, can I come present at Canada Fruit Fest or something, <laughs> knowing you. But, uh, right. <laughs> you know, you, um, you definitely, you, your life completely changes after your very first Fruit Fest. Um, it does. It changes any time you follow your intuition, you know, like just just taking that leap of faith and trusting that your intuition is guiding you in the right direction is just that's it, you know. What's one piece of advice you'd give someone uh, who wants to go to their very first fruit festival, like the Canada Fruit Fest? Um, my one piece of advice would be to to do it, to just go do it and to, and to, and to, you know, really see it as an investment in your future and in yourself, see it as an investment. Don't see it as a loss. Like you're going to be losing resources. You're going to be losing time. You're going to be losing time away from your job. Like see it as a huge gain. Right. You know? And, and what's one thing or maybe a couple things that people can expect to, uh, to experience or to gain from coming to the Canada Fruit Fest? Connection. Um, education, love, and I would say a, a deeper sense of self, a deeper sense of, I mean, that's what I experienced at the Woodstock Fruit Festival, is just being around so many people who are dedicated to really delving deep within themselves, it makes you feel so much more connected to yourself. And I walked away really being more clear about what I wanted to do in my life. So, yeah. So, and, and, and. With the presentations that you're going to be giving at Canada Fruit Fest, what can people expect from your talks or from your workshops? You can expect um, how to overcome very common issues in your life like jealousy, possessiveness, and insecurities. A lot of people don't realize how all of these things are so related to porn and masturbation. They have no idea how jealousy issues in relationships can be related to porn and masturbation. So if you come to my talks, you're going to have a much better understanding of how to approach healthy relationships because you'll have a better understanding of how to think of sexuality, intimacy, and love. Ever been to a fruit festival before? Because now's your chance to make it happen. Now is your chance to have an experience of a lifetime. Prepare yourself for four jam-packed days filled with education, motivation, inspiration, new friends, live music, high-quality fresh foods, hands-on workshops, and so much more. So it's January now. The festival season is coming up in about, what, like uh, six, seven, eight months in August. Mm -hmm. um, you having gone and prepared for your first fruit festival last year, what advice could you give someone who's wanting to prepare to come to Canada Fruit Fest? So I would definitely recommend checking out all of the uh, speakers and the workshops beforehand so that you can have a really clear idea of everything that's going on and you can um, plan your days out accordingly and make sure that you're 
seeing and doing everything that you wanted to go do. And um, also, uh, yeah, the with, in terms of like health preparation and stuff, before Woodstock, I tried my best to, to maintain a raw vegan diet so that by the time I got to Woodstock, it wouldn't be such a shock to my system, I guess. But I don't know if that's really necessary or not because um, – I don't know. I think that, and even if you're eating a cooked food diet, you could still go to a fruit festival. Yeah, I think. Not yeah, food. if if you're worried about you know not being able to eat fully raw, that's not an issue at all. There's people who even like bring a little bit of cooked food with them, like cans of beans, or whatever. But the <laughs> the biggest advice I'd give someone is, uh, you want to wean off caffeine before you come, unless you're planning on drinking caffeine mm. at the actual event, because. You know, the only the only real like withdrawal symptom of, of cooked food is just like wanting cooked food. But the real yeah. withdrawal symptom of caffeine is like you get headaches and you're really right. tired, you're really fatigued. Um, so I was I met a few people last year at multiple fruit festivals who they just cut cold they cut coffee off cold turkey before the fruit fest and I'm like, How's your festival going? They're like, It's amazing and I'm like, How are you feeling? They're like, I always get this like headache and I'm like, Oh like were you a coffee drinker? And they're like, yeah, man, I cut it off right before. And they're yeah, like, they're like on, the, on, on the flight over, I had like a Red Bull. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so that would be my tip. Yeah, don't worry about you know weaning off any foods or whatever, like trying to start a raw food cleanse or anything. You can totally do that if you want. But the biggest thing you want to cut out and wean off at least is, is caffeine, unless you're planning on drinking coffee or green tea at the actual festival. But Good tip. Yeah, for sure. I, I got that tip from Ronnie, actually, because Ronnie was finding that a lot of the people in the UK, the UK is a big tea drinking country, so a lot of people drink tea, and at the festival there's no tea, and they all of a sudden start getting these headaches. Um, yeah, I never even thought about that, and it's true. Yeah, so Alana, um, your code again is AHANA25. If anyone wants to use your code, they can get a $25 discount. Um, mm -hmm. And the last question for you, for someone wanting to maybe become a presenter in the future, someone wanting to you know make content online at least to become like an influencer like you are uh, what would be your piece of advice for getting started with that um, I would recommend just to let go of the idea of perfection and just focus on putting stuff out there because yeah. I think for the longest time I had wanted to make videos and state and say stuff but I kept I kept having this like mental uh, block from being able to do it because I I, you know, I was watching lots of YouTubers that would use all this fancy editing, and I had the idea that like I needed to have these super high quality videos to get noticed. But then I realized that like if you have a message, if you believe in what you're saying, then it doesn't matter. Like you're you're gonna resonate with people. So I would just recommend just start to put stuff out there. Don't worry about it being perfect. And over time, you're gonna naturally get better at communicating. You'll naturally get better at delivering the message. But you won't get better if you don't start. So just start and continue putting stuff out there. Cool. Thank you so much. And uh, bonus question: What is it about the Canada Fruit Fest that made you want to come and be a presenter? Well, I've always, you know, Canada has always like seemed very appealing to me. I know that you're there, and there's like some other people who I followed online who live in Canada, and it also just seems very beautiful. And um, yeah, I mean, it seems like a it just seems like a, a good opportunity to experience something new, you know, like Woodstock was cool. It was within the U S and it's just, it's just cool to see how these fruit festivals are kind of popping up in like other countries, you know, like you just mentioned, there's the UK fruit festival and Canada fruit festival. I just think that it'd be cool to, to go to new places just for the, just for the experience, you know? Yeah. No. Oh, awesome. Well, we're going to, we're going to love to have you there. And uh, super, super excited to do uh, another chat with you in the coming weeks, coming months. Because yeah, I know, I mean, absolutely. in the next chat we do, we can go a lot deeper into uh, your your actual tactics for succeeding with no porn, no masturbation, sure. um, or at least um, a lot less porn, a lot less masturbation. Yeah. But um, yeah, cool. Thanks so much, Alana, for coming on. And again, if uh, anyone wants to use your code, it's Ahana25, and they get yeah. a twenty-five dollar discount. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ted. Cool. Peace out. Want to come to a fruit festival? The 2019 Canada Fruit Fest could be the ideal experience you've been dreaming of. The magic unfolds August 9th through the 12th in the beautiful Okanagan Valley of Kelowna, BC.
the 2019 Canada Fruit Fest, Canada's number one plant-based health and wellness festival of the summer. Visit www.canadafruitfest.ca to learn more.